Welcome back to my channel. We're starting section three of the sampler. This was what we finished section two with. We did the clasp weft and then a border. In preparation to making the rhinots, we need to weave about an inch and a half from the, our border from the previous section. And then we'll put the rhinots in. So now there's about an inch and a half of weaving, and now we can prep for our raya knots. So to prepare for the raya knots, we need to have some fiber. You can use um, the variegated fiber, that's the fiber that I've chosen, or you can mix the three colors that you've been weaving with, or whatever you choose. You're gonna take a cardboard and measure it about four inches across, our raya knots are gonna be four inches long, and so by winding this around, it's an easy way to measure four inches. You take the fiber off the cardboard and snip it at both ends. And now you have four inch pieces. We're gonna make our groups of raya knots with four fibers in each group. So you want to prepare enough yarn that you have 11 groups of fibers with four in each group. We prepare the yarn for the second type of raya knots by stretching the yarn out to about a yard's length and then doubling it back three times to make a four strand or a four plied yard of yarn. And that's the prep for the continuous raya knot, sometimes called the Swedish style. For this style of raya knots, you're gonna to need to make a yarn butterfly or a little bundle of yarn. So by laying the thread across your thumb, you're just gonna go around and around And then you get the tail. You're gonna slip it off your fingers. And you kind of have a bow. And the tail's gonna go around a couple of times and then it's gonna come back through the band. That's to cinch it tight. And then as you weave with this leading yarn, it'll just pull it out. Okay, let's make the raya knots. You have your 11 bundles of yarn all set and cut. So you're gonna um, open the shed. It doesn't matter if it's an up shed or a down shed. And then you're gonna count three warp strings in from the selvage. Then you're gonna take two warp strings in your fingers and take the first bundle of yarn lay it across the two warp strings and wrap the right side around the right warp string and then wrap the left side around the left warp string and then gently pull it down to your fell line which is where your weaving was and repeat take the next bundle of two you lay the yarn across the two warp strings Wrap the right one, wrap around the right, wrap around the left. When you're working with hand manipulated um, fibers like raya knots, you wanna make sure you have enough space to work in. So make sure that your warp is advanced so you have a good working space between where you're tying the knots and the reed.
Now with the shed still in that position, I'm gonna put color number one through. Change the shed, color number two. By adding these picks across, it locks the knots in. So there's our riot knots. They're already tightly woven into our project. You can see we might want to trim the, um, we made them extra long so we could trim them because we want to trim them back to this line where we started the pattern. So just decide how long you want them to be. Kind of like giving a haircut. Looks like I need to do a little bit more accurate trimming. There we go. To demonstrate the other style of Raya knots, which is a continuous fiber, I need to weave a space between here and here, so when the next fringe comes down, it doesn't overlap. So I'm just gonna put a couple rows of picks in to create about an inch and a half like we had before. Couple more rows. And I'm gonna this time I'm gonna start from the right side. So count it three over, pick up the first two, gonna wrap the tail under, and then I'm gonna take my butterfly and wrap it. And there you have it, all one continuous loop.
and those are rhinots, two different ways. What are inclusions? Our inclusions are anything you want to stick into your weaving. Here I have some roving that I'm going to insert and show you. This is actually what yarn looks like before it becomes twisted. Or you may have some leftover bunches from your raya knots, or you may just want to include some of the colors that you're already weaving with. But it's just a way to stick something in for to add texture and interest. Here's a weaving that has lots of inclusions in it to give you an example. When you're adding inclusions, you do it as if you were weaving a pick, except it's a, it's a piece of fiber or a natural or object that you just want to stick into your weaving. So I'm going to create a shed. And the first sample I'm going to do is some of this roving, and I'm just going to pass it through with my hands. I don't think I want the tails to stick out so much, so I'm just going to kind of wrap them in. Then I close my shed, and then I have to lock it in with one of my weaving colors. Now you might not even want to wrap it all the way across, so you could do something shorter. Then you're going to have a gap over here where you didn't actually put a pick all the way through. But that can add texture too. That's going to leave a space, but maybe that'll be interesting. It's a little bit more of an organic way of weaving. Now here's some of the fibers we had left over from our Raya knots. I'm just going to include these in here randomly. Just create some interest. Those are inclusions. That concludes section three. Join me next time for section four when we'll talk about weft floats, hem stitching again, taking your project off the loom, wet finishing, and fringe twisting.